What's up everybody? My name is Brian Terry and I am an Oakland-based chef, author, and publisher of Four Color Books. We are here in my backyard in Oakland, California, and the recipe we're making is taro fries with green herb aioli drizzled with a little pili pili oil, which is one of the recipes that I developed for Black Food, my forthcoming collection of recipes, art, and essays with over 100 contributors throughout the African diaspora. So the first thing we're gonna do is make this pili pili oil. Pili pili is a name in Swahili, which actually means chili. And this is the type of oil or sauce that you'll find on uh, tables throughout Sub-Saharan Africa. We are going to simply pour in one cup of olive oil into our small saucepan here. And then I'm gonna add our smoked paprika. I'm gonna slowly pour this in while whisking it to ensure that there aren't any lumps. So I'm just gonna take some of these. I've already rinsed off my thyme and rosemary. So we're just gonna add just some full sprigs in there. No need to remove the leaves from the actual um, stems. We'll add some of the rosemary. You can use any number of herbs. I mean, this is obviously kind of my Northern California spin on Pili Pili oil. You know, I just wanted to, as I often do, kind of taking these different classic dishes throughout the African diaspora and cooking them through the lens of the place that I live and work. We're going to add our bird's eye uh, chilies. So we'll add these and whatever, you know, we'll just throw a handful in. If you can't find bird's eye chilies, uh, feel free to use whatever chili makes most sense. But I always say recipes should be used as a guide. So feel free to swap out dark leafy greens, chilies, things that are pretty comparable. I don't think it's any problem to swap out. In fact, I encourage you to do so. Here we are, we're gonna let this simmer and then we can get to making our green arbor aioli. We have a cup of vegan mayonnaise that we're going to create into an aioli. First thing, uh, we need a tablespoon of minced garlic. I'm just gonna take a handful of this um, parsley that I actually harvested from our front yard garden. So we only need about a quarter cup of the parsley. I think there's a reality that a lot of people, they're dealing with scarcity, they might be dealing with lack. Everyone doesn't have a full on chef's kitchen. Time, many communities actually lack just the basic necessities, healthy, fresh, affordable, culturally appropriate food. This reality of food insecurity, food injustice that a lot of people are dealing with, there are folks who have been creatively addressing the problem in communities throughout the country. And I think it's important that we all think about how we can play a role in ensuring that everyone can eat well, not just the people you know, with all the resources, but no matter what your zip code is, your income, your skin color, you can access the basic human right of good food. These are all the elements to our aioli. We have a little bit of um, sea salt. I'm just gonna sprinkle some of that in. We're just gonna whisk this together. And then the last thing is adding a little bit of our acid. This is our green herb aioli. We're gonna transfer it to our uh, squeeze bottle so that you know, we can do a little squeeze, a drizzle over the fries once they're ready. So not necessary, but uh, you know, just something that facilitates um, an easier kind of uh, finalizing of the dish. We're gonna get into making our taro fries. So taro is a really versatile vegetable that's used in a lot of parts of the world. Think of it as a cousin of the potato. The thing about a recipe like this this is rustic. You're cooking it for your friends. You're not trying to impress some head of state. So there's no need for these to be like cut into perfect batons. From there, we'll cut these into half inch slices. With these pieces that we cut off, you can certainly compost them. But if you want to think of some other creative uses, you could do that. There's a technique that I often use, and that technique is adding them to cold water and letting them sit in the cold water for two or three hours. Not necessary. I think they'll be fine without the soaking. With um, deep frying, you need to ensure that the fat that you're using has a high burning point. I like to use avocado oil. It's one of the healthier fats. It actually has one of the highest burning points. We've poured enough into this skillet where it's about an inch and a half of oil. The temperature that we're looking for in terms of like when we're ready to put our fries in is about 300 degrees. One of the visual cues so that you know that the oil is pretty much ready 
is you'll see it, to, you know, they, they, it's often described as shimmering. But what we can do is I actually took uh, one of the ends that I cut off of Taro, and we're just gonna do a test. So let's put this in. If you see it bubbling and it raises to the top, that means we're good to go. So you know what I'm gonna do? I'm not just gonna do a test. This is the full on, we're like in the game, this is happening. So I'm gonna add a handful of these. So I'm gonna turn the temperature down a little bit because I don't want these to cook so quickly that the outside is crispy and the inside is raw. I move them around a little bit just to ensure that they're being thoroughly coated. Food is this way in which we teach our daughters about their identity and their cultural heritage and their food ways. And because my wife is Chinese American, there's this what we call Afro-Asian fusion that we do at home. So this dish, just this really delicious combination of crunchy and creamy and hot, spicy heat. So these are looking really good. I would say you want these to cook for maybe four or five minutes. You'll know they're ready once they're starting to turn brown. I think once they get there, after about four or five minutes, then we're good to go in terms of transferring them. So we're just gonna move them over to our baking sheet. And I wanna immediately hit these with some of this fine sea salt. The last thing we wanna do is just, we wanna get a couple of garnishes going. Let's just thinly slice some of this Fresno chili. I'm gonna take some of this minced parsley <clears throat> and then we'll sprinkle that on top. But in addition to that, we're gonna add some parsley leaves. So let's just plate these. Now, I, I must admit, I'm not the best with this plating stuff, but um, I definitely know how to eat it. So from there, I'm gonna take some of our green arbreoli that we prepared earlier and just give it some of that on top. We'll drizzle in some of our delicious pili pili oil, some of our mint parsley, our Fresno chiles, and then finally, some of these beautiful leaves. Let me tell you something. I'm glad we got all that extra aioli in there. Mm. Mm -hmm. Absolutely delicious. Those taro fries, crispy on the outside, have that sweet, nutty interior. The uh, Fresno chilies, the cayenne, the pili pili oil give it that heat, but it's cooled off by that green herb aioli. Make this dish, get these recipes in my book, Vegetable Kingdom, in my forthcoming collection, Black Food. If you want all the recipes together, click the link below. We don't have any rosemary, but there's a rosemary bush right down the street. And so this is where I'm getting my rosemary from. I'm doing some foraging here. So we're just gonna pull some of this off and we'll take it back.